We start with our emergency management coordinator and Loretta Fire Chief, Mr. Guillermo. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me well, Loretta? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining for our, our weekly media briefing. Uh, just some uh, quick updates. Uh, as you all know, the hospitalization number is down and it's it's been down. Uh, there is occasionally that the numbers go up by four to five patients. Uh, and but they are still in the very low numbers. Uh, the hospital does provide a census to us daily, and we do have report uh, and talks with them daily. So it's something that we're constantly monitoring, uh, and we are keeping an eye on it. So if there is a sudden uh, change, we will we will we do have a plan on how to uh, help fight fight continue fighting this pandemic in that in that area. Uh, the ACS uh, will be demobilized by next week, and the infusion center is still planned to be demobilized at the same time. Um, the medication that was given at the infusion centers, I know the emergency rooms do have that medication, so we are encouraging them to continue giving that medication because it has proven to be very effective. Um, and, uh, but we do know that prevention is the key, which is vaccinations and also masking and following the guidance that are set by our health authority. Uh, the vaccination rollout has been very successful. Uh, at this time, we uh, we are continuing to strategize different uh, ways to continue giving the vaccinations. Uh, to, uh, we are very aware that there are citizens that might be working different hours, so we are strategizing on how to provide the vaccines at different areas after hours with the National Guard. Uh, we are uh, we did start a campaign this week to vaccinate the 16, 17, and 18 year olds in our city. We did reach out to our private public schools, and we're also going to be working with the job court also. So uh, if if there are uh, groups that do feel that they uh, uh, have a big group to vaccinate, uh, don't hesitate to call uh, the fire department or the health department with uh, myself or our health director. And we, but we will continue pushing out the vaccinations uh, as more resources come into our community. In order in Espanol, seguimos mirando los números del hospital. Todavía siguen bajos. Si hay momentos donde están admitidos que suben los números poquito, pero estamos constantemente viendo los números y en eso estamos checando si las pacientes, los pacientes que están en el hospital tienen las vacunas y también tienen las Los dos doses, porque es muy importante y estamos para decirle en público que cómo qué importante es de tener las dos vacunas. Ah, no más no es una, es las dos para que tengan la protección total de la vacuna. Ah, no to, si hay un número que si suben de repente los números y nuestros hospitales necesitan más ayuda, ah, el estado ya ha dicho que no pueden mandar más ayuda. Pero ahorita ya están pidiendo los enfermeros y para el medio de mayo ya todos los enfermeros que están aquí en el estado ya del estado ya deben estar dinobilizados. En el alternate care site y en infusion center uh, también deben estar dinobilizados uh, para los últimos de este mes. A la medicina, medicina que están dando en el infusion center, esa esas como quieran los Los de emergencias, como quiera, van a estar uh, dando esa medicina para los uh, ciudadanos de Laredo. Uh, en las vacunas, estamos, estamos uh, haciendo diferentes uh, uh, methods para pasar las vacunas a la comunidad. Sí sabemos que hay, hay una gente que trabaja horas largas uh, o no tiene, uh, y por eso también tenemos con las vacunas, con el National Guard, vamos a tratar diferentes maneras para tener las vacunas de como de 2 a 7 o 2 a 8 para darle la oportunidad a la gente que salga del trabajo para darle las vacunas también. Uh, esta semana comenzamos vacunando a los los, uh, 60, los de 16, 17 y 18 con la vacuna Pfizer en el National Guard. Uh, uh, coordinamos con las escuelas, uh, UASD, LASD, uh, las privadas, Harmony y también el Radio Job Corps. Y así vamos a seguir coordinando con los grupos para pasar la vacuna a la gente. Uh, that's it for my report, Loretta. I stand by for your questions. Thank you so much, Chief Heard, for your report. Now we hear from Laredo's Health Director, Richard Chamberlain. Good afternoon, everyone. Currently, we are still below 150 daily active cases and a 5% positivity rate. We have seen our hospitalization rate rise and fall at the 5% level over the past couple of days. Vaccines are 
helping us keep numbers low, and we continue to promote the importance of vaccines. Vaccine is now available more than ever at multiple locations across the city. We are working to expand options, as Chief Heard just mentioned, of accessing vaccines and developing a process to administer vaccines with the support of the local, local businesses to their staff while at work. This will help provide coverage to those who cannot find the time to obtain the vaccine. We have passed the 130 person mark of vaccinated persons in our community. I want to say thank you to everyone who has made their appointment and is now fully vaccinated, but we still have to reach thousands more. It is up to you. Get vaccinated. Buenas tardes. Actualmente todavía estamos por debajo de 150 casos activos diarios y una tasa de positividad de 5%. Hemos visto que nuestra tasa de hospitalización ha aumentado y disminuye al nivel de 5% en los últimos días. Las vacunas nos están ayudando a mantener bajos los números y seguimos promoviendo la importancia de la vacuna. La, la, vacuna, ahora está, la vacuna ahora está disponible más que nunca en acceso en toda la ciudad. Estamos trabajando para ampliar las opciones de acceso a las vacunas y desarrollar un proceso para administrar vacunas con el apoyo de las empresas locales a su personal, a su personal mientras que están en el trabajo. Esto ayudará a brindar cobertura a quienes que no pueden encontrar el tiempo para obtener la vacuna. Estamos pasado el, cien, el, cien mil, el 130 mil personas vacunadas. Quiero dar las gracias a a todas las personas a todas las citas y ahora están vacunadas, pero todavía tenemos que llegar a miles más. Desde usted, vacunarse. It's up to you. Get vaccinated. That is my report. Stand by for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chamberlain, for your report. Now we hear from Laredo's Health Authority, Dr. Victor Trevino. Yes, good afternoon, Dr. Victor Trevino, Health Authority. <clears throat> we are reporting 833 deaths as of yesterday. And of course, our condolences to the families of those who have lost, we have lost to COVID-19. Now, in line with what Chief Hurd said and uh, Mr. Chamberlain, we're reporting a slight uptick in the hospitalization at 25 COVID patients as of yesterday, as compared to 10 days ago when we were at six. However, this morning, the hospital is slowing, is slowing less, less admissions and showing less admissions, and the hospitals are still within their capacity to handle the current census of COVID patients, which is, uh, at 7%, now this 7% is com in comparison to the total hospitalized patients and the census. We're, mon we're monitoring the recent uptick as it relates to the vaccination and home gatherings. Now specifically speaking about home gatherings, as the aggregate infection metrics have stabilized, we're currently issuing caution to the public on having large in-home gatherings without fo following public health guidelines especially when the uh, status of attendees vaccination status is unknown. And we're seeing cases of this nature that do arise. So some alarm as a result could be lead to more infections and deaths. Some of these activities are partly driven by the false belief that because of the infections uh, being reported lower and lower, that the virus is not lo no longer here. This is the farthest thing from the truth. The lower infection uh, being reported is a natural consequence of, the, of more vaccinations and unvaccinated people continuing to follow the public health guidelines. But the virus is still very much present in our community. So please stay vigilant and get vaccinated. Now to speak about pregnant women and the COVID-19 vaccine. As has been discussed previously, the previously CDC recommendation for pregnant women to receive their COVID vaccine was a balance of risk benefit and discussions with their doctor. And what I tell my patients is that there is, where there was no scientific evidence that antibodies formed from COVID-19 vaccinations caused any problem with pregnancy, including the development of the placenta and fetus. A recently released study published yesterday in the New England Journal of Medicine yesterday found that preliminary findings did not show obvious safety signals among pregnant persons who received the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. As we all know, the more studies 
uh, that are ongoing and there are more studies that are ongoing that will be shared with the public to further add the evolving science. Now, currently the CDC and the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, ACOG, and the uh, Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine, SMFM, have supported the position that COVID-19 vaccines should be offered to pregnant individuals who are eligible for vaccination. Now, this is based on the fact that those who are pregnant are, are at a higher risk for being hospitalized in an intensive care unit and requiring a high level of care, including being intubated, breathing support on ventilators, and are at higher risk from dying if this happens, including morbidity and mortality to the baby, and also the baby needs to be delivered preterm. On Espanol, buenas tardes, Dr. Victor Treviño, Autoridad de Salud. Para hablar de la actualización de los hospitales, nos encontramos informando 833 muertes hasta hoy, y hasta ayer, perdón. Nuestras condolencias a las familias que, de aquellos que hemos perdido por COVID-19. Estamos informando un ligero repunte de la hospitalización de 25 pacientes con COVID a partir de ayer, en comparación con hace 10 días cuando estábamos a, las, a nivel de 6 personas. Sin embargo, esta mañana el hospital está disminuyendo uh, las admisiones y las hospitalizaciones y todavía están dentro de su capacidad para manejar el censo actual de pacientes de COVID que representa el 7% del censo hospitalario, el 7% en comparación del censo total de otros pacientes. Estamos monitoreando este aumento reciente en lo que se refiere a la vacunación y las reuniones en el hogar. Y específicamente las reuniones en el hogar, a medida que las métricas de infección agregadas se han estabilizado, actualmente estamos advirtiendo al público sobre la celebración de grandes reuniones en el hogar sin seguir las pautas de salud pública, especialmente cuando se desconoce el estado de vacunación de los asistentes. Y estamos viendo casos de esta naturaleza que se generan con cierta alarma ya que el resultado podría provocar más infecciones y desgraciadamente más muertes. Algunas de esas actividades están impulsadas en parte por falsa creencia de que debido a que las infecciones que se han informado son menores, el virus ya no está aquí. Y esto es lo más alejado de la verdad. Las menores infecciones que se reportan son la una consecuencia natural de que hay más vacunaciones y las personas no vacunadas continúan siguiendo las pautas de salud pública. Pero el virus todavía está muy presente en nuestra comunidad. Así es que manténgase alerta y vacúnese. Ahora para hablar para las mujeres embarazadas y la vacuna COVID-19. Como se ha comentado anteriormente, la recomendación anterior de la CDC para las mujeres embarazadas uh, que reciban la, vacu la vacuna COVID-19 era un equilibrio entre el riesgo y el beneficio y conversaciones que se tenían con su médico particular. No hubo evidencia científica de que los anticuerpos formados a partir de las vacunas de COVID-19 causaran algún problema con el embarazo, incluyendo el desarrollo de la placenta y el feto. Un estudio reciente publicado ayer en, la, en el New England Journal of Medicine en encontró que los hallazgos preliminarios no mostraron señales de, de seguridad obvia entre las personas embarazadas que recibieron vacunas del COVID-19. Y como todos sabemos, se están realizando más estudios y se compartirán con el público para contribuir aún más en la evolución de la ciencia. Y actualmente la CDC y el Colegio Americano de Obstetricia y Ginecología, la ACOG, y la Sociedad de Medicina Materno-Fetal, la SMFM, han apoyado la posición de que las vacunas COVID-19 deben de ofrecerse a las personas embarazadas que son elegibles para la vacunación. Y esto se basa en el hecho de que las embarazadas tienen un mayor riesgo de ser hospitalizadas en una unidad de cuidado intensivo y que requieran intubación y tratamiento de alta tensión, incluyendo ventiladores. 
y también tienen un mayor riesgo de morir si esto sucede. Y también hay que pensar que los bebés, si es que tienen que aliviarse la, 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 la embarazada prematuramente, esto eh, también enseña riesgo para el bebé. Este es mi reporte. Gracias. Thank you so much, Dr. Trevino, for your report. Now we have some questions from our media that have been posted here on the chat. The first question is from Julia Wallace from LMT. It reads, are you all aware if any of the new COVID-19 cases or hospitalizations are people who have been fully or partially vaccinated? Good afternoon. I can share that we have had reported to us three as they are entitled by DSHS vaccine breakthrough cases for persons that are not hospitalized. The beauty about obtaining your vaccine is that these persons did not experience any severe or become hospital, severe symptoms or become hospitalized. For fully vaccinated persons that are admitted to the hospital, we have not documented or have been reported any or any information been reported for fully vaccinated persons. A single dose vaccine for a person who has been admitted to the hospital has been documented. I don't have that specific number as of right now, but for persons who are not that have not been admitted to the hospital, just to backtrack on that, it is three persons total that have had their been fully vaccinated but have not been admitted to the hospital. I might add a little bit to that, Noraida. The uh, country has reported 5,800 cases uh, of the total vaccinations all over the country that have been given. Only 5,800 have shown uh, illness after being vaccinated. Thank you to both for that answer. The next question is from Judith Rayo from Univision and Fox, and it reads, Dr. Trevino, there were recent deaths that involved three family members. Are you aware if they were fully vaccinated and would you be able to comment on this case? Yes, uh, we're unaware of their or were vaccinated or not, but the reports, preliminary reports say they were not, but we have still have to confirm that. And uh, we cannot speak to specifics about this, but uh, yes, there were uh, three deaths that were reported within a family. And this was thought to be after uh, Easter gatherings. So we are aware of that. And uh, that is very, very sad to hear that. Could you also say that in Spanish? Sí, cómo no. Sí, se, se reportó tres muertes después de una agrupación uh, del día de Pascua y uh, se reportó que eran uh, todos parte de una familia. No se sabe aún si estaban vacunados o no, pero la, la, los primeros reportes parecen de que no estaban vacunados. Pero al oír esto es, es, es una, una noticia muy lamentable y todavía se está investigando esta situación. Thank you, Dr. Trevino. The next question is a city question, and I believe it's more for Parks and Rec, and I think we do have JJ Gomez, our director for Parks and Rec. Um, ya se activaron las ligas deportivas en los parques, tanto de soccer como baseball y softball. I'm sorry, can you read the question again? Yes. The question is in Spanish, JJ. It says, ya se activaron las ligas deportivas en los parques, tanto de soccer como baseball y softball. Buenas tardes. Yes, uh, buenas tardes, JJ Gómez, director de parques. Es correcto, uh, al abril 19, ya abrimos, ya abrimos, como ya hemos dicho el concilio, que íbamos a abrir las ligas eh, de softball y de baseball y de soccer. Este, ya uh, comenzamos el lunes, Hay, a poquito a poquito estamos, a, ya están entrando los, las ligas, los papeles y de adultos, todos hasta los niños ya abrimos las ligas y, y ojalá que ya, uh, ya, sea, ya se podemos abrir, abrir más ligas como, como van entregando los papeles. Thank you, JJ, for, for that. Um, the next question is from Judith Rayo. She just wants to clarify how many new deaths have been reported so far. As of today at noon, at noon no new deaths have been reported to us at Laredo Health. From Javier Amieva, it reads, esos 5,800 pacientes infectados nacionalmente de COVID después de ser uh, completamente vacunados fueron hospitalizados. Muertes relacionadas, hay algún reporte. I know, uh, Dr. Trevino, you just mentioned that, right? 
Sí, eh, tenemos el reporte de estos casos, pero las cifras exactamente y la distribución de, de, de lo que se pide, aún no tenemos esa información, pero tan pronto que la tengamos, la compartiremos con el público. Okay, thank you, Dr. Traviño. I don't see any other questions, but I do know that uh, Chief Heard would like to say a few words as well. Thank you, Noreda. I just wanted to close uh, and emphasize uh, as you were hearing the questions, Um, you do hear the difference when you're vac fully vaccinated versus one dose vaccinated and not vaccinated. I mean, we have been mentioning this already and, and the data that we're starting to ask for the hospitals. I mean, we don't have all the data yet, but it does show that there is a very big difference in hospitalization. Also, and so how severe your illnesses are and in death. Uh, if there are pub, uh, there are citizens out there that do need their second dose, don't hesitate to call us. I know the health department, we have done that already for other citizens that needed their second dose, um, and we'll continue to push that out. You need both doses. Ahora en español, nomás quiere decirle a la gente que están mirando de las preguntas y de la información que estamos dando, que es muy importante de que estén las dos vacunas. Uh, si, si hay una diferencia en si, sale, si, están, si, sale, si están en un hospital o hasta an, uh, de la muerte, el hospital nos está dando más y más datos y está enseñando eso. So, le pedimos al público que, que si no han tenido su segunda vacuna, que vayan para atrás donde agarraron la primera y si no pueden, hablen al Departamento de Salud y podemos coordinar en eso. I just wanted to close with that, Norena. Thank you so much, Chief Heard, um, for that important information. Again, I don't see any other questions popping up on the chat. If you all have any questions, uh, please reach out to us. We will gladly be able to give you the information that you need. That is all for our media briefing for today. Thank you so much. Have a great day.